I set out to make the scariest game I possibly could, but with the goal of finishing it in under 10 days. My idea for the game is to have the player go through levels, searching for little monsters you need to destroy, which will allow you to go to the next level, all while being chased by a much bigger monster. You could think of it kinda like a first person horror Pac-Man game, but instead of Pac-Man, you use shears. And now I had the idea sorted, it was time to start making this game. At the start of this challenge, I started with the first person template, so the game already has the same amount of mechanics as your average horror game. I adjusted the player's movement and got some objects working that you can interact with by pressing E on them. The first interactable object I added was doors, as well as locked doors, and with that I got a key system working, where you can pick up key items which are found around the levels, and it will display what keys you have in the top left of your screen. The icon is just a random placeholder image I found in the engine that I'll use until I create some models later on in the challenge. Next I added a dialogue system where the player will say things when interacting with various objects that will help the player know what's going on and add some context. I also added some variables to this system that I can customise so the text will shake faster in more intense situations. The style of it is inspired by how the dialogue in Inscription works. I got quite a lot done in the first day but one one more thing I added before the day was over is a sprinting and stanima system so you'll have to be more cautious when running from any monsters. And with that finished, day one of the challenge was complete. On to the next day, I created this outside level where you'll start. I thought it'd be cool to have the same dreamlike vibe of liminal spaces for some of the environments. Then I began working on the layout of the player's home, which I'll use as a little prologue slash tutorial to help new players understand what they have to do in the game. When you first enter the home, after exploring a little bit, you will encounter a hole in the floor, which you'll have to search around the house for items to border it up before you can go to sleep. Then once you've gone to sleep you'll be woken up by some crashing noise and that's when things will start to get weird. Unfortunately I only really managed to get the block out for the house done so I'll have to begin working on this on day 3. For day 3, I created the items you'll have to collect to border up the hole in your house. It's still not a hole yet, but I'll do that later on when I start modelling the environments. Then I start working on what's going to happen after you go to sleep. First I disabled all the lights in the house and gave the player a flashlight as their only light source. I also created this creepy swinging light and added it to the stairway, which I think creates a nice creepy effect while you're exploring the house. Then I created a little monster in Blender and placed them where the hole is. These are the little monsters you'll have to look for and chop up with the pair of shears to open the door which lets you progress, which I started on the next day. So let's move on to day 4. I modelled the shears and added them to the game, added some code to let you pick them up and play an animation when you interact with the little monster to chop them up. Then I modelled this weird fleshy door that I think looks much cooler than using some generic door and made it so that it will open after you sheared all the monsters in a level. This will hopefully help the player understand what they should be looking for. This is when I eventually thought up the name of the game as well, Sheer Abnormality, which I'm pretty happy with because it's also a play on the word sheer. And now that the challenge is nearly halfway done, it's time to start working on a hostile monster. I created something in Blender that I think looks intimidating, created some animations for it and imported it into Unreal Engine. It will start chasing down the player when activated and kill them if they get in range, forcing you to restart that level. I also added an ability to make him run faster for the harder levels. This will add an extra level of challenge as the game progresses, which also helped to keep it scary as the player improves. On day 6 with all that out the way, I started creating the layout for the next 3 levels. I made sure to add several little monsters you need to search for this time to get the end door to open instead of just one. And trying to find them all while being chased actually turned out to be pretty fun. I think 3 is a good amount of levels to have, with each one getting scarier and more difficult as you progress. I also thought it'd be cool to give each one a unique aesthetic. The aesthetics of the game are pretty heavily inspired by Silent Hill as well if you couldn't tell. 
On day 7, I was unsure if I would actually be able to finish the game in time with how much I had left. Originally, I planned on doing a 7 day challenge, but ended up busy with other stuff I had to do. So I instead turned it into a 10 day challenge as you can see by the title of this video. So over the course of day 7, 8 and 9, I chipped away at creating all the environment art assets I would need for the game, and added them all to the player's home. Also the hole that the monster will pop out of is now there. Then I also started polishing up the main three levels and filled them with the assets I made as well. And after adjusting the lighting and adding some fitting music, I think they ended up looking pretty spooky. Not bad progress, but with one day left and still no ending to the game, or even a main menu, I would have to pick up the pace. So on the last day I began on the main menu first, I thought it'd be cool to take the hole from earlier and have a camera rotate around it. I was also going to have planks covering the hole, but thought it looked better if they were scattered around. I added some quick buttons to be able to actually start the game and the main menu is now complete. And now it was time to create the final level, which I made to be a much calmer and shorter level to help the player calm down after what they just played through. Though, I don't want to spoil too much of the game, so you'll just have to play through the game yourself and come up with your own game theories. And now that the game is playable from start to finish, I think this challenge was successful. I had a lot of fun testing myself to see what I could get done in just 10 days, and would definitely recommend this challenge to other indie devs as it will help you learn a lot. I've released the game on itch.io for free, and the link to the page is in the description below. Be sure to subscribe if you want to see more content like this, and comment what you thought of the game if you play it and thank you for watching this video.